Alright guys, probably can't even see me. It is nighttime. It's actually midnight. I've got the Helicota loaded up in the trailer. Headed to Phoenix so that we can go out on the boat tomorrow. Uh, this is day one or night one of us going across the country with the Helicota. And I'm fully loaded right now, you guys. And I'm getting almost 20 miles per gallon right now. Crazy in this truck, you guys. So I'm averaging 19.4 towing this big heavy trailer with the Helicota in it, steel frame trailer, 24 footer, and all the stuff in it, which is nuts. So I'll keep you guys updated on that, but let's get going and I'll probably see you guys in the morning. All right, boys. So we are in Arizona. Um, like I said, got here late the other night and I am now headed out. So we are making tracks right now. Um, just ripping along. I might uh, just kind of, I guess we'll have to discuss a bunch of different stuff. Obviously, you know, having this trailer behind this truck is, um, you know, something new for me or us. And I put the weight distribution hitch on there and I did have, I think it's, I believe it's 10K, I don't know, there's two stickers on them, 10K and 12K. Uh, the guy gave me two different sets of bars for it, meaning uh, they're like different st uh, stiffness or they're made for, you know, different tongue weights. So right now I have the 10K bars on here, but I think I might uh, try switching to the 12K bars to try to relieve some of the tongue weight on it right now. Because it seems to be doing not too bad, but I've been playing with moving the truck, uh, you know, position in the trailer. So I was trying to see about moving the truck a little bit back. Uh, nothing too crazy. The truck is facing forward uh, in the trailer, but you don't want to have it you know, too far forward necessarily so that you have a ton of tongue weight and you don't want to have it too far back because then that'll make your trailer start getting all squirmish or you know whatever it'll start getting tail happy so i moved the truck back which relieved a bit of the tongue weight but i think it's kind of giving me a little bit more uh swing in the back so before we lose light here i think i might try uh to put the 12k bars on here and see if we can relieve that maybe i can move the truck a little bit forward again and uh it might make it a little bit more stable for the road but i'm gonna see how far we can make it today and um keep you guys posted guys so that's how the truck's sitting right now like it's not really squatted out too bad she's pretty much level maybe a tiny bit but what I'm gonna do is just before we lose light check out the scenery you guys so we're out in the middle of nowhere in Arizona right now but I'm gonna try and swap out these bars to the 12 uh, K bars so we'll try those out same settings they're just gonna be a little bit stiffer and then uh, I want to see how she squats or how it handles so the trailer is just about level maybe a tiny bit lower in the front but not by much but I think those bars might help a little bit So I got the 12K bars on here, and like I said, somebody's labeled them 10K, so hopefully they have that right, because they look identical. But um, yeah, those are on here now. Doesn't look a ton different. We might have to do something with the hitch. So the way that works is the hitch, you have to actually angle it a little bit more. You can kind of see she's on a bit of an angle right there, like kind of like that. So it's essentially lifting like a wheelbarrow handle on the back and lifting the back of the truck up. But trailer looks, pretty level like I said we might have to bring the truck forward a little bit um, just so that it's got a little bit more weight towards the front but I don't know maybe a little bit more but we'll mess around with it okay so before moving the truck around in the trailer I just want to try it just with those bars just so I can kind of know what the difference is so we go over some rough patch of road and maybe be able to hear but it does feel a lot better with those 12k bars on there you can tell it's not like when you would hit like a bump or something, you could kind of feel the truck would sack out in the back and now you can feel it's just staying flat way more than it ever was before. And so I think I think this is gonna be the fix as we hit more rough road here. There we go, we're back on some smooth stuff. But 
yeah, I'll uh, keep you guys posted, but for now it feels like 10 times better than it did before. I don't know if you guys can hear that or see that. That is not rain. Those are bugs. Man, it is just plastering the window. It sounds like rain, but those are bugs, you guys. Like, <laughs> at this rate, I'm not gonna be able to see in like five minutes. This is crazy. I don't even wanna try to clean them up. Good thing we need fuel soon, because this window is gonna be covered. You guys, I got absolutely obliterated with bugs. Check out the front of the trailer. That is insane. Like they're just splattered everywhere. And then look at the front of the truck. All over the mirrors. <laughs> what the hell? That is crazy. I gotta wash off my headlights at least. I can't see nothing. Okay guys, it's the next day. I got in about 12.30 at night. Stopped in, I don't know if I'm gonna mess up, La Cruces, something like that, New Mexico, just before El Paso. So stop here, got a little bit of rest, and it is 7.30 in the morning again right now, and I am headed to Austin, I believe, to drop off the supercharger. So it's about a nine hour drive from here, so we will get moving. We should get there about five o'clock, so probably realistically like six, maybe seven, with you know a few stops and fuel breaks and stuff. So let's get moving. There we go, guys. We are now entering Texas from New Mexico. So if you guys have never been this way, it's really close to Mexico and they have like these inspection stations. So it's pretty, it's border patrol, but you're not going through the border, but they just stop all trucks and cars. And I don't know what they're checking. I guess they're making sure that everything's legit. And that's what we're going through right now. Okay, so nothing too exciting so far. I'm driving through some rain right now. Uh, we're in the middle of nowhere, Texas. And like kind of, I would say like halfway between Austin and El Paso, somewhere just in the middle of nowhere. But I guess a few updates, fuel mileage. Um, the speed limit here is 80, so everybody's flying here. But I mean, the truck, the truck has as much power as you want, surprisingly. I know a lot of people, you know, talk poorly about the Eco Diesel, but there's as much power as you need towing this trailer. Honestly, I'm not just BSing you guys. Like this thing, this thing moves. But I mean, I'm able to maintain like 70 miles an hour pretty easily with this trailer behind us. So because of that, the fuel mileage isn't doing as good. Uh, last tank, my average was 12.5, it says. So a little bit less, like when I was doing like 65 uh, miles an hour and stuff like that, um, you know, or anywhere between like 60, 65, I was getting a lot more. I was getting like, you know, 16 miles per gallon, 17, somewhere, somewhere around there. But yeah, it's dropped since we, you know, bumped the speed up or whatnot, but uh, we got a lot of ground to cover too. I gotta go and just drop off the supercharger today in Austin, and then we have to be in Bowling Green tomorrow. Um, so a lot of ground to cover, but yeah, everything's uh, clicking away good. I think, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. Um, I did change the engine oil, and I changed the transmission fluid on the Ram. I didn't document it, because you know it wasn't that exciting, and I've documented that stuff for you guys before. But I did document, or sorry, I did change that stuff, and I all I did was I just replaced the fluid in the transmission. Uh, I didn't. I honestly was so pressed for time. I just dropped the fluid, didn't change the pan, and this thing had like a few like firm shifts. There was a couple hard shifts between like I don't know if it was like two, three, or three, four, which gears, but somewhere around there, it would kind of bang the gear, and it it went away. So a lot of guys are skeptical about changing their transmission fluid on you know these trucks, but. I can confidently say that as long as you do it properly, and I've showed you guys my method before, um, there's no issue on you know getting the proper fluid back in there and the correct level and all that stuff. Like transmission's working beautiful on this thing. And I guess I should tell you guys the color of the fluid. It looks like it was original. It wasn't too too bad. Like it was still you know somewhat clear. Uh, the original color is like a light green. And as far as like the color of the fluid, because I know some guys are gonna ask. 
it was like, it wasn't that bad, but it was definitely needed to be changed. Like I think I got it at a decent time. I don't think it's ever been changed before, but it was, truck had like 120 thou on it and it looked like it was the original fluid, but uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't a bad time. I think by the time I get back, I'll probably, just so you guys know, these things hold, I think around eight quarts is the capacity, eight or nine, don't quote me exactly, but it's around there. And you'll only get like four and a half quarts out of it when you do like a pan and filter. Four and a half, five and a half, but you won't get it all out. So what some guys are doing, and I think I'm gonna do too, drop the fluid, leave the pan, drive it for a bit, and then change it again with the pan. And that, that'll get like a lot of good new fluid going through the system. And that way you can get like a pretty fresh oil change on it, on the transmission. Man, it sure don't rain like this in California. At least it's washing all those bugs off the front of the truck. <laughs> I don't know what the heck kind of storm we're going through, but you guys can probably hear all the thunder. There's a crazy lightning, and like that ditch is almost full. So much water. Look, people are pulling over. Look at that road, it's all flooded. This is crazy. All right, so we're out of the storm, but check this out, you guys. So, speed limit here is 80. Caught up on an obvious hill, right? <clears throat> this thing does not struggle whatsoever. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys can all agree we're about to hit this hill, right? I wanna show you guys just how well this thing does with all this weight behind it. So we're gonna lose some speed for sure, but I mean, watch, she'll, she'll sit right around like 2,500. Hopefully you guys can see all that. So we're hitting the hill at about 80. We're going up it. Maybe drop to like 78. Didn't even downshift. Almost at the top. Dropped to like maybe 76. And I mean, I could put my foot into it more if I wanted to, but. I'm not trying to win any races here. Well, look, she's just sitting right around like 23, 2400, right up the hill. Like, this thing is awesome, you guys. I don't know, everybody talks crap about these trucks, but I love this little thing. All right, boys, so it is now Tuesday, and I have to be in Kentucky tonight. So we spent the night in Dallas last night, and we are on the road, but I think I've said this a few times, but I apologize if I keep saying it. I am so impressed by this little truck, you guys. Like I said, I went into it the same way you guys would, you know, hearing all the critics on these things, you know, all the issues, don't get this truck, it's a horror story, whatever. But this little motor pulls, you guys, like, it is no slouch. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a steel frame trailer. That trailer empty weighs 3,000 pounds, plus the Dakota, we haven't weighed it officially but I'm just gonna ballpark it being around 4,000 pounds plus miscellaneous stuff, uh, you know, tools, all that stuff that we have in there. Let's call it 1,000 pounds. So I think we're probably around, if I wanted to guess, maybe around 8,000 pounds in the back. You know, we'll call the Dakota four and then we'll call the, the trailer three plus 1,000 pounds. So 8,000 pounds, I think, back there. But like the speed limit here currently, like I showed you guys the speed limit yesterday, there's some places over 80 and you know, some of these transports are hauling. Right now it's 75, but like, I can sit here and just maintain speed, no problem. Like, you know, we're just cruising along 75, we're at like just under 2000 RPM, getting 15, 16 miles per gallon, obviously it depends how much I, you know, if I'm going up a hill or whatnot. My average right now, I'm doing like, you know, 75, cause that's, uh, that's the limit here, but like on average, like maybe like 75 or so, but I'm getting like 13 and a half miles per gallon doing 75 while this truck decides to go off the road. It's a little bit windy out right now. So that's the one thing that I think to improve the setup, I think I would probably um, get rid of the car tires because I think these are just like a passenger tire. This guy can... This guy keeps going off the road. He must be texting. But yeah, back to my uh, story. I think to improve the setup, we could probably go ahead and get some E-rated tires, like load range tires on the truck. I think that would get rid of a little bit of the squirm, since these are, I'm pretty sure these are just like passenger, even though they can carry the 
the the weight that we're trying to carry. I think they're just passenger rated tires, so I think they have a little bit more flex in the sidewall, a little bit more squirm to the truck. I think if we got the stiffer sidewalls, then I think it would track a little bit more straight because I think we're okay as far as the load aspect of it, but we are kind of get a little bit of this like sidewall flex, I feel like. But other than that, I mean, there is no lack of power and having the eight speed transmission made into this diesel is awesome because you know, whereas if you had like the Cummins or something, I don't know what they're up to. I think it's just a six speed, I think is the highest uh, amount of gears you can get on a Cummins. Like you kind of fall between gears, right? But with this thing with the eight speed, like it can just click up just a tiny little bit, you know, just drop one gear and it just brings the RPM up a little bit. It's not like screaming, which is really, really nice. So one, the one thing I didn't like when we were towing with, uh, we used to have an 05 Hemi that we towed a 24 foot trailer. Uh, we were doing all the snow cross tour stuff and that thing was just sitting at like 3500 the whole time and if you had a downshift it was like over four grand again i think i've said it before but this thing makes its peak torque around 2000 it makes 420 foot pounds of torque at 2000 rpm whereas the hemi makes 400 foot pounds of torque so it's less and it makes it at like 3800 rpm so you have to really rev out the hemi to be able to get the similar amount of torque and it's still not even as much torque as this thing so i'm loving this thing you guys i'll keep you updated but getting excellent fuel mileage it's got the smaller tank um it, i think it's like 22 gallons or something like that and i'm getting like 350 to the tank and not like trying to milk this thing or anything like that so super happy with it check out this rain we got you guys it is hectic still in texas and we're going through memphis right now you guys kind of interesting looking going through downtown across this bridge here and we are passing through okay guys so we're in tennessee we're about to cross over into kentucky and then we will be at holly headquarters and we're going to drive out from there so i'm going to wrap up this video because i kind of want to break up the drive and the adventure into uh, kind of a few different videos for you guys um so i will wrap this one up here uh, this took me, I mean, this video here took me a few days to make. So, you know, left Friday, now it's Tuesday night, and we should be at Carlisle tomorrow night. So Wednesday night, I'll be at Carlisle, we'll be setting up. And then, yeah, Thursday, yeah, Thursday we'll be setting up, and then Friday's the event, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So come out if you guys can. Uh, I'd love to see you guys there. If you do see me, make sure you say hello. Uh, I'll be at the Holly booth with the Helcota with the truck. Um, make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up before you take off. Uh, let me know anything else you guys want to see on this adventure. I'm also, we're going to be doing a bunch of other stuff too. We're going to be going to GearFX to get the rear uh, differential built after this. So they're going to put in, um, they're going to put our whole differential together with the different gear set and everything. So that'll be a fun process. We're going to do that after this show. And then uh, I also want to try and get a track day in as well. So lots of stuff on the way, you guys, including uh, coverage and footage from the show. So. Stay tuned for that. We'll see you guys in the next video.